Hello Neewin and we're back for part 3 of the Super Smartphone Showdown where I'm pitting 5 of the flagship devices from each of the 5 major Android smartphone manufacturers against each other. We've already looked at the design and the display and both times the HTC One X has come out and won. Which is of course phenomenal, phenomenal effort by HTC. But today it's all about the software included on these devices. Now, unfortunately my Droid Razor here is a GSM-1 and it has not yet been updated to Ice Cream Sandwich like the rest of these devices. Because of that fact, not only does it have the worst software running Android 2.3, I'm actually going to discount it from this test because I haven't yet received the 4.0 update. So that is very unfortunate on the part of uh, Motorola, but we will leave that to the side. We still have four devices in contention though. These are all four Android 4.0 devices. HTC One X, Xperia S, Galaxy S3, Optimus 4X HD. The One X is running HTC Sense UI 4.0. The Xperia S is running their Timescape UI. Galaxy S is running TouchWiz Nature UX. And over here we have Optimus UI 3.0. So there's a lot of very different things and a lot of very similar things between each of the devices. So which one is the most complete skin? Because first of all, we're gonna look at basically the design of the skin overall. None of them use stock Android, which of course I'm very disappointed about because I love stock Android. It looks amazing. I was very disappointed to see that none of these devices run stock Android. But which is the most stock feel? Well, HTC has gone with a very heavy skin. They've skinned pretty much everything and every app that they could possibly get their hands on, save for a few untouchable apps, you know, like the, the YouTube, Gmail, Search. Things like that are left untouched but again, it's a very heavy skin that you see on the HTC One X. As I mentioned in my review, it's a bit of a mishmash, to be honest, between uh, gradients and non-gradients. You see there's a lot of gradients here, a lot of what I'd call sort of childish and outdated look. It's not, it's not a particular, you know, favourite of mine, but... Uh, doesn't do too bad. You see here, for example, again, gradients. It doesn't particularly look the best. Again, you get things such as the dialer, and then again, you know, gradients and all that sort of stuff. It does look a tad bit outdated. That said, the widgets on this are very nice. You can see the clock and uh, weather widget there is looking much better. And it is improved, admittedly, from previous versions of Sense, but I don't think that the look is good enough to keep up with the other devices. Again, it is very heavy and it looks somewhat outdated. Timescape UI. This is Sony's uh, version on the Xperia S. This device is not Android 4.0 out of the box. I had to update to 4.0. It's very, it's very fluid. It's very, it's very easy to use. There's a lot of ICS features. You see, here the settings, for example, has been revamped to look Android 4.0 style. You see things like the contacts. It's very smart looking. Turns out I don't have a contact for myself. But I'm not convinced that this either is the best. Uh, interface to use. Some elements I found to be rather strange, like the fact that, why, why is this app button so small? Why is this folder so big? I mean, things like that doesn't truly make sense. A lot of the skinning jobs that they've done uh, don't seem to improve anything. They're just there skinning for the sake of skinning, which again, I, I have mentioned, is not entirely the best. That said, the looks, for example, in that calendar, it does look very good on the lock screen, for example. You've got a slide to unlock, and it does look very clean and crisp and much more modern than you see on the One X. But that said, is it the best? Well, we'll have to check out the software on the other devices. Galaxy S3, 
Again, I did slam this a bit for the rather colourful and vibrant looks that play very well into the hands of the AMOLED display that it uses. It's, it's a fairly light skin, but some of the things that you see are skinned, what I call again, skinning for the sake of skinning. There appears to be no real advantage to some of the, some of the things that they have done throughout the interface. There seems to be a, another strange mishmash of gradients along there, along the emergency calls, and just flat colors. You'll see that again in contacts here. Uh, you'll see that there's gradients up the top and then flat colors. It looks kind of strange. It looks like they're deviating from the standard ice cream sandwich look there. So um, not sure that's enough to win the software award here. Optimus UI is again a bit of the same. It's very colorful, but you're not using an AMOLED display, but it still appears to be very, um, very vibrant. It appears to be like they've sort of stolen a few ideas from Apple here using these square icons rather than, I guess they're not rounded off, but it does appear that they've tried to make all their icons look uniform. Unfortunately, that falls to pieces when you actually download any apps as they come in between the nice little square icons you see around the place. The widgets are alright and generally the skin is very smooth and responsive. You've got a Tegra 3 inside here. You get some ICS elements here, like you can see this lock screen and I do have to praise them for cho for choosing a thing and sticking with them they have chosen to go flat and they've stuck with the flat look again I'm not I'm not convinced that this is the best software it's very light on for example here it's functional it's not much different from the uh, standard stock ice cream sandwich look then a few skinning things they've, you know, they've changed things up a bit but generally, it's a fairly light skin. Again, I've used this device the least, so probably not the best to comment on it at this stage for this device, but uh, it's not too bad. We should also take a look at the features that each of these devices comes with, and whether there are any specific things that the phone can do that is better than one of any one of the other ones. The HTC One X, doesn't have any particularly outstanding applications or anything that could be worthwhile mentioning. And like I said, the skin is fairly heavy without bringing in any sort of major new features. You get some cool things, for example, there's a f they include the HTC Flashlight app. You get Friendstream, which is a mishmash of Facebook and Twitter. But to be honest, I don't see the advantage of using Friendstream over using your dedicated Facebook and Twitter apps. You get a few hubs and things. I mean, if, for example, in the People app, you can link link contacts like there is here. You can see their thread updates and their history if you've linked Facebook to their account, which is, you know, it's a fairly nice feature, but again, it's nothing too groundbreaking on the grounds of the HTC One X. The Xperia S has a similar uh, feature to the friend stream. It's called Timescape, and I haven't actually set it up on this Xperia S, but when you get it running, it is again a mishmash of all your incoming messages, emails, um, Facebook and Twitter messages, and all sorts of stuff like that. Again, there aren't a huge number of cool features that this device comes with that set it apart from anything else. I do praise the, the fact that they've updated the album and it does look very good, it's very functional. But apart from that, I can't really see any particularly amazing features again that they have uh, used here. It's nothing particularly amazing. As you see here, this is just a fairly stock standard uh, contact look. So yeah, nothing particularly amazing on the front of software from here. I do have to admit the widgets are very good and the music player specifically I recall from my review a couple of months ago being particularly uh, worthy. I'm not sure I can find the music player here because I have not set this up in alphabetical order. Where is the music player?
jump cut. I found it. It's called Walkman. I don't know why they renamed it between ICS and the previous version, but it does it does look like this. Again, I don't have any music installed in the device, but the music player does look pretty good on uh, the Xperia S, so that is one worthy feature. The Galaxy S3 does have the best features out of all of these devices, though. They're, they have included some very cool things in the settings that the device is capable of doing. For example, it can use the front-facing camera to detect if you're watching the display, and then it will disable the screen timeout if that is the case. You get a whole bunch of screen modes. You get uh, LED indicator settings. LED indicator being in the top, up the top there. The widgets are quite nice, and some of the while the again this is a fairly heavy uh, skin. They have included some new features, such as the S Planner does include a fair few new things. Even though I don't particularly like the look of it, S Memo is a very functional uh, memo app. The video play is surprisingly good despite it not looking particularly amazing or anything like that. And of course, you get S-Voice when you double tap on the home button. Hello, S-Voice. I'm not sure what you mean by Hello, Me's Voice. Well, I didn't get it right that time, so, uh, yeah. S Voice isn't particularly useful as far as the, an application goes, but again, this device does have seemingly the best feature set. Optimus UI is fairly stock standard Android in terms of features. They've basically just skinned things without adding too much extra. I haven't had a chance to go through all the settings and all the features here. There are some very strange software things that I've found, such as the brightness here. Automatic brightness does not actually mean automatic. It means automatic plus a brightness letting that you set as the base brightness level. It's very it's a very strange way of doing it, but it does allow you a bit more control over uh, what you're doing. You know, there's a few there's a few gesture things and stuff like that. But overall, the Galaxy S3 has the best features. The question is, does it look the best? If my Motorola Android Razor here had Android 4.0, it would look the best. I've seen videos, it does look very good. But out of these four devices which are currently running Android 4.0, the one that I like the most, surprisingly, would have to be this, the Optimus UI. Because it's fairly light, it's a bit it's a bit iPhone, it's a bit cartoony for my liking, but the way that they've actually gone through and skinned things, it doesn't look too bad and it still conforms somewhat to the ice cream sandwich uh, guidelines. That said, the most features though, that is awarded to the Galaxy S3 because there are lots and lots of software features that are available here. So again, it's a bit of a toss up between these two devices on the end here. Again, this one, too heavily skinned and not enough new features. And this one, again, not really enough features. And while it looks all right, it doesn't uh, compare to the Optimus UI in terms of which, what software actually looks the best. So anyway, that is a conclusion of our uh, software little review here on the smart smartphone showdown. We'll bring the Droid Razor back in. Again, subscribe and you will get the next video of this delivered straight to your YouTube inbox. Or of course, just check back at neowin.net for the next part tomorrow where I should be covering the performance of all these devices. Which of them will indeed be the fastest out of the devices I have here in front of me. So yes, check back tomorrow for that. And hopefully you've enjoyed this and thank you.